This is the JAC N55 electric delivery truck. It's a 5.5 ton GVM truck, it's 3.1 tons uh, curb weight, and so it's got a payload of 2.5 ton. This truck's been imported by JMC, Jackson Motor Company, uh, in, in Tasmania. They're made by JAC, a Chinese company. JAC also make diesel trucks. They've just started importing this electric version. You can see the batteries down the bottom here. There's 97 kilowatt hour of uh, lithium ferrophosphate under here. And these battery packs have a gap in between. So aluminium box by the look of it. Uh, might actually be steel. Uh, could, uh, with, with air in between, which means air cooled. And, and a very simple, nice design of how to air cool this battery. Also, just a few bolts along here. Looks like you can remove this battery pack, this battery pack separately, and replace them if required. I noticed this here. I looked up what this is. It looks like it's a um, an isolation device. Uh, so yeah, pull pull this handle down. This thing comes out. Your battery is then completely isolated and and safe to work on. Now JAC would make the chassis and then in Australia they've put on this uh, canopy or whatever you call it up the top here so I'm what I'm imagining is black is JAC the aluminium there is Australian what they've done here Looking in from behind, you can see the, again, the, the black here is, would have been the JAC and the, the metal up on top is what's been added in Australia. It's rear wheel drive, we've got a diff there and a reasonably short drive shaft. And then back behind there, there's a motor. So direct drive straight into here. Here are the two battery packs on the other side. You've got four all together. I can see some instructions here on how to tilt the cab up. This is dangerous. Giving me instructions like this. Okay, so from the front of the, of the vehicle, there's the motor. And just in front of that, we have a couple of, of boxes of electrical tricks. Under the cab, we have our big box of electrical tricks. And it is connected to the charging socket here. I'm guessing that this is our charger. Uh, for DC and AC and underneath the the tray there in front of the motor I'm guessing that those will be the the controller for the motor and probably something else maybe a DC DC converter something like that so we have coolant going into here if this is the charger, they do say it'll charge up pretty quickly, so that makes sense. Cools it through this fan down here, radiator. This here is probably a brake booster by the look of it. It has power steering. That looks like the steering column comes down into here. And so if I trace those two grey tubes along. Uh, 
Okay, so one of those comes into this reservoir. Ah. The other one comes along here, turned into a red tube, and they both go into... Oh, focus. Focus, there we go. They both go into that device there. So I think that must be the the steering power steering pump underneath that looks like another pump i reckon that's the pump for the radiator water so the tube then comes up and goes into the the charger there in the other direction it goes into the radiator In the passenger side here, we have a nice cubby hole here with a, a drink bottle holder, ashtray, washer, refill space. There's no glove box. Two seats here for passengers, two seat belts. In here we have some cup holders. The display, it's a reasonable dash space here. Behind the seats, there is a, a cubby back here. It's, it's nice and large. Good for maps and all sorts of things. And up the top, there's a place up here. Oh, I've got a strap. Sorts of things in here. Ah. And there's another one of those over the driver's seat as well. Cup holders in the middle. Spot there for your lock. And the same storage space on the driver's door. So to drive it has this type of key. You drive, go up to it and you can see there's a, a lock there, so that's pretty obvious what you need to do with that. Get in the truck. Okay, let's turn it on and see what happens. So if we turn it to accessories. Ah, not much happens, but this screen lights up. Okay, so next key position is on. We'll get some noises. We also have this screen in the middle here, which is subject to reflections. It's not always the easiest to see, uh, but it's, it's reasonable. You can normally figure it out. State of charge, 69%. Motor speed, motor current. Trip A, so we've done 57 kilometres so far, and the odometer of 1,085. The NECO in the middle is uh, neutral, and we're in eco mode. It's saying on that fuel gauge it looks like about half, but up the top it says 69%, so who knows what to believe. The gauge on the left is battery temperature. So this has been sitting idle all night, so it's um, just sitting there like that. If it gets too hot, then it won't charge. Turn it. Ah, so now we're on, on at the moment. If we turn it to, I'll put my foot on the brake. And turn it to start. That ready little green came up there. And now we're getting some noises from outside. So the noise we can hear now appears to be steering. And the way I, reason I say that is if I do this, then it changes. So it sounds like it's got a hydraulic uh, power steering 
and that pump runs the whole time and, and makes a bit of noise, which means this truck makes noise just sitting here whenever it's on. It's nice because you, you realize it's on. If I put my foot on the brake, then a pump comes on, I can hear that. I don't think it's air brakes, but I'm not actually sure. I can't hear any air, but then maybe you don't these days. Either way, it has brakes. I have my seatbelt on and the door will close now. You can see there the current, it's drawing one amp. Presumably that, so the current, yeah. so the current and the power meter should say more or less the same thing, uh, just in slightly different ways. When you're driving, it's difficult to read the, the central uh, read out here but it's easy to read the the dials and so your power yeah if you can't read the little current then you can read the power meter and the state of charge if you can't read that then you can read the the big gauge over to the right hand side you probably don't need to see the middle all that much oh it is useful actually to see if you're in gear or not okay uh, now we have a manual handbrake very nice I like that the gear stick There's a button on the side which you need to press to go into reverse, otherwise neutral and drive. So to put it into drive, we press the foot on the brake and go backwards, like so. And to when I did that, I was in neutral and I went to drive, like so. To go into reverse, you need to go back to neutral first, then hold the button and go reverse. In reverse, it has this camera over here. Uh, I think that's been added in Australia. But the reversing camera is way over there, which is probably where it's meant to be for a, uh, a left-hand drive vehicle. For a right-hand drive vehicle, I've found that's quite a stretch to, to look right over there to see in the reversing camera. It'd be nice if they'd put it here. Let's do a quick demonstration of what this dash looks like, uh, just really slowly because I can't Put the camera in a place where you can see it while I'm probably properly driving. Okay, so to go into drive, I put my foot on the brake, pull that back in to drive. It now says drive and echo. Take my foot off the brake and I don't go anywhere. So this doesn't have creep, this vehicle. So when I push my foot down on the accelerator, then something happens and off it goes. So that current there is reading all the four amps. You can hear the noise, that's a manufactured noise. I'll stop in a second and it will stop. get the idea of what the get the idea of what the dash does anyway handbrake on into neutral turn it off and the noise is stopped and you know you're off set up here to do a drive-by sound test. It's fairly quiet in this position here and we'll see what it's like when I drive the truck past. Find somewhere to turn around.
So you might have noticed the noise there it was generating. So that's a, a pedestrian warning noise. It generates it at below 25 kilometers an hour. And so as you're driving along the road here, you'll notice there's no noise. And then I get down to 25 kilometers an hour and the noise cuts in. Other than that, the main noise is the crunch of the gravel on the road. Join me next time, we'll go for a drive and I'll do some charging.